Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Coding with Estefania. This time, we're going to start a series of videos on extensions for Visual Studio Code. We will see what they do and how you can customize their settings. So let's begin! In this first video, we will talk about the CodeSnap extension. CodeSnap is a great extension if you need to take screenshots of your code in Visual Studio Code. It's perfect for sharing your code on social media, blogs, or presentations. I use it all the time and I really, really love it. So let's see how you can install it and customize it. Here I'm in Visual Studio Code and I have my folder open here with a Python file. We will use this file to take screenshots of our code. To install the CodeSnap extension, we just go to the extensions menu, the panel, and here we write code snap like this. We click on the first result, code snap, which has more than 1.1 million downloads. And then we click on install over here. After we have the extension installed, we will see these two buttons, disable and uninstall. That is how we know that it's already installed. And we will also see it in our extensions. If we just clear the filter here, we will see it installed here. If we click on the extension, we will also see some details, some features, some usage instructions and how you can use it. But I will show you some tips and tricks of how I use it every day while I work on my code. Great. So let's just open the file, the Python file that we have here. We have a simple loop. It's just a demo to see how this works. The quickest way to take a screenshot of your code once you have the CodeSnap extension installed is to just highlight the code that you want to include in the screenshot and then right click and go down here to CodeSnap. Once you click on that option, you will see this panel to the right. This is the default screenshot that you will see, but you can customize the style of the screenshot and you will see how in just a moment. You can see that we have the code, we have some line numbers, we have some window controls, and we also see a background. We will see how you can customize all of this, but first of all, how can you actually get the image file? Well, you have two options. You can either copy paste it by right clicking on the screenshot and then selecting copy. This works for Mac OS, for Windows, or for any other operating system that you're working with. We have copy and then you just paste it anywhere you need to, like a presentation, for example. That is for copy pasting, but you can also click here with a left click. You just click here on the shutter and you will see the option to save your file as a PNG file, as an image file. So you can either save it or copy paste it, whatever you prefer. Awesome. Those are some key facts about this extension. So let's see how you can customize the settings. If we go to the extensions panel again and we see the code snap extension, if we click on the gear icon over here and then we click on extension settings, we will see all the settings that apply to that particular extension. So let's see how you can customize them. First, we see the background color, the background color of the snippets container. What we are referring to here with the background color is the color that you see over here, this gray color. If we want to change that to a different color, we can do so. For example, let's just change this to another letter or another number, like let's say two, one. This will give us another color. This is a hexadecimal code, a hex color. And after we apply those changes, we just need to click somewhere outside of this option to apply that change. We go back to our code and then we will see the new and updated color if we still have our code selected. You just need to get the hex code for that color. And you can do that very easily if you have a color picker tool in Visual Studio Code, or you can also just go to Google Color Picker. You will see this tool over here where you can just drag this lighter and select the, the color that you want. And you take this code that says hex over here. You can copy it like this. For example, let's say that I want to apply a light purple to the background. I have this hex color, hex code, and I copy it over here. And then I go to Visual Studio Code and I paste it. I can just delete this and right click and select paste. After that, I just need to click somewhere outside of that option to apply the changes. And you can see that now I have my purple, light purple color in the background. So. That's super helpful if you want to customize the color. 
And another great thing that I think you are going to love is that if you want to change the code that is actually on the screenshot, then you can just select the new code that you want to have there and the code will be automatically updated in the screenshot like this. Awesome, right? Great, that is for the background color and for selecting the code. Now let's go to box shadow. Box shadow is like this shadow that you can see over here. This very subtle and blurry shadow at the bottom and right areas or parts of the screenshot that give it like some sort of depth against the background. You can change the settings here. You can make it more blurry, you can make it more intense, you can make it softer. You can also change the color of the shadow over here by changing the RGBA color, which is another format for specifying color. And you can do all sorts of things. Let's change, for example, these values to 25, to 123, and 67, just to <laughs> assign some random numbers. If we go back to the code, now you can see that we have a different effect over here. We have some changes. Let's also remove the fourth value or let's apply one, which is the highest value, which means that the shadow will not be transparent. And you can see how the shadow is more intense over here. We can also move the shadow. Let's change this to 15. And this will move the shadow a bit lower over here. So we can move it around, we can also change its blurriness, and we can make it even more intense. So you just have to play around with these settings to get the perfect shadow that you need. And after that, we find the padding. The padding is just how wide this background color will be. If you want the background color to be really wide, then you just keep the default setting. But if you want to make it a bit smaller, a bit narrower or thinner, then you just change this to, for example, one. And now if we update it, you can see how the border is just a lot smaller. So it's really cool to know in case you don't want to have such a large background color around your code. And right here, we also have another option, which is also super helpful. When we select code, for example, let's say that I select this print, this call to the print function over here, which is on line two. By default, even though this line of code is on line two in my original code file, in the screenshot, you will see the number one here because it's the first line that we selected for the screenshot. But what happens here if I check this option? Then I will use the real line number instead of one by default. You can see that now the real line number in the code file is assigned here, the number two. This is helpful if you want to keep the line number as a reference in your screenshot, but usually we like to start from one. So by default, this will not be selected. Awesome. So now we also go to rounded corners, which is more intuitive. This is just making the corners more rounded for the window. If we have this enabled, the code will have rounded corners. If we don't have this enabled, if we have this disabled, then we will see the rectangle over here with squared corners with a 90 degree angle. I really like rounded corners, so I usually keep this enabled. And then we also see show line numbers. This is helpful to display the line numbers, which is enabled by default. But if you don't need the line numbers, for example, sometimes we want to save space in a design or in a presentation or in a social media post, then we just disable the line numbers and voila, we just see the code without the line numbers over here. And finally, we have we are reaching the final set of settings that we have over here because this extension really has a lot of helpful settings. We find show window controls. Show window controls really just enables or disables showing these window controls over here, which are like the controls that you can see on macOS for a window. I like to keep this. I think it looks really nice, but you can also disable it here and you will not see it. You will just see the code. And another great setting is show window title. By default, this is disabled. You can enable it to display the window title with the open folder or file name. Let's enable it and see what this does. You can see that this immediately added the name of my folder coding with Estefania, the name of my channel, 
and then the name of the file, which is program.py, the name of the file that you can see over here. This is also helpful if you want to keep this as a reference in your screenshot. And here we see two settings, two options that we can customize, and now they are drop-down menus because we have multiple options that we can choose from. First, we see shutter action. The shutter is what we can see over here where we are taking the screenshot. This setting customizes the behavior of the shutter button. We can either choose to save the image when we click on the shutter like this, when we click on it like this, or we can choose to copy the image when we click on the shutter. Those are just two options that we can choose from. We can either copy or save it. Awesome, so let's keep the default, which is save, and now let's go to target. Target is a setting that lets us take the screenshot with or without the container. Let's see what this does. By default, we know that the screenshot will have the container. But if we change this to window, let's see what happens. If I save the image on my Coding with Estefania folder, and now I check it here in the exporter, you know that Visual Studio Code is also helpful to see the image, then you can see that now the screenshot is saved without the container. If we keep the default settings, let's see what we get. If instead of window, we use the default setting, which is container. Let's take the screenshot again now with the default setting, which is what we will see by default. Screenshot container. And now if I open the explorer and I open this image, I see the container. I see the background color over here. That is the difference between container and window. Let me rename this to window. So you can remember the difference visually container and window. Awesome. And finally, we have one more setting to cover. This is transparent background. I really like this setting. I customize it all the time too. If I just go back here and I take my screenshot again, I can enable or disable this setting, transparent background. If we enable this setting, we will use a transparent background when taking the screenshot. So we will not see the background color over here. Let's take the screenshot over here. Let's just enable this. Use a transparent background when taking the screenshot. I just take the screenshot again. Then I click on the shutter. Screenshot transparent. And then if I open that PNG file, the image screenshot transparent, you will see that now the screenshot has a transparent background, but we can still see the shadow because we are still keeping the shadow. So that is why you see something like a little bit of purple over here. But if you copy and paste it, you will not see the background color, only the shadow. And you can also remove the shadow completely. That is up to you and you can customize that in the settings. Great, so now we've customized all of these settings and you know what they are used for. But how can you go back to the original settings that the extension came with in case you don't want to customize them anymore? Well, in that case, you just need to click here on the gear icon next to the setting and choose reset setting. Like this, you just reset the setting. And if you ever see a blue line over here like this, that means that the setting has been customized. It's not the default value of the setting. So you can just reset it and everything will go back to the original state of the extension that you had when you installed it. And one more tip before we end this tutorial that I think you will find super helpful is that you can adjust the size of this gray area over here. The color theme will also reflect the color theme that you have in Visual Studio Code, okay? So you won't necessarily see the same colors that I have right here. This is for my color theme. But going back to what we were talking about resizing the screenshot, well, if you just click here on the lower right corner, the bottom right corner of the screenshot, you can resize the screenshot, okay? You can drag it and make it even wider or narrower and change the size and the code will readjust automatically. Awesome. So I hope you like this extension. Remember, it's super helpful to share your code on social media, on blog posts and presentations. Stay tuned for more videos like this on Visual Studio Code extensions. There are many helpful extensions that you can use in Visual Studio Code to improve your productivity as a developer. I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.